Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today, I wanna make a video for you um, on one of the hottest new topics in data. I guess not really new, it's, it's been around for a few years now, um, but that is data catalogs. Uh, they're becoming, not new, but they're m much more relevant in today's day and age because pretty much every organization is now generating a vast amount of information, um, you know, either through AI or just better data collection. Um, and now managing, organizing, and accessing this data efficiently is critical for businesses to actually make use of that data, gain insights, and then make informed decisions based on their actual data. Um, but with so much data, you need somewhere to organize it. And that is where the data catalog comes in um, as a tool that allows organizations to catalog, where the name from, cut all their data assets, um, kind of acting as a link and a dictionary almost for data users to read about their data sources um, and do things like data discovery, governance, usage, uh, and having a single source of truth for understanding how data is linked and accessed across your organization. So what I'm gonna to aim to do in this video is explore, hey, what is a data catalog? How do they work? What are some of the benefits? And then round it off with some of the top players in the data cataloging space. So you have an idea of what data catalogs are and how to get started with one. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So now, what is a data catalog? Um, and so data catalog has a few key features, but really at its core, it is just a centralized repository that stores metadata, any kind of information around data assets, such as databases, tables, files, reports, um, managing all the information around those reports and all those different types of data to make it easier for users to discover, understand, and govern their data. Um, and you can think of it almost as a library catalog that provides essential details around books, like titles, like authors, summaries, but it's around your organization's data. Um, and a well-structured data catalog will include things like metadata, so descriptive information around data sets like source, format, owner. It's gonna have things like data lineage, um, so being able to track the data movement from source to destination, understand what changes were applied to the data, who interacted with it. Um, also things like data classification and tags, um, understanding, hey, what are the business categories or compliance labels? Where is this data coming from? Who is interacting with this data? Um, and then also user collaboration, uh, having things like annotations, ratings, shared insights, um, uh, the ability to have a central platform for many teams to collaborate and interact with our, their data. Um, it's really important to have a defined place for that to occur where you can define rules, access controls, um, and onboard and keep track of all these different teams. Um, and by serving as this kind of knowledge hub for data assets, data catalogs really help to improve data accessibility and governance um, and enable organizations to make better use of their information by providing it to more people with better understanding of how, what that data actually contains so more people can make use of it. Um, and then also something you know, that's really key, this day and age are things having good integration capabilities um, and also a lot of platforms are starting to bring in generative AI capabilities as well. Because generative AI is really good for giving you a quick description of your data and what's happening with your data. Um, so really useful in this type of use case where that's really what you wanna know. Hey, what's happening with my data? So now how do data catalogs actually work? Um, and really, how data catalogs work is similar to most other data pipelines, where you have data that is ingested, and so typically you'll run your data catalog process as you're ingesting your data and kind of in tandem with your data pipeline. So that's why it's important to have those good integrations so that you can integrate your data catalog with each system that's manipulating, collecting, organizing, enriching data um, so that it can then provide the metadata for each of those steps. Um, and so a typical kind of step-by-step -step breakdown, and I would say like the six main components are first, metadata ingestion. Data catalogs automatically scan and collect metadata from various sources. So this is, you know, on ingestion, you have your data catalog collecting the metadata from, you know, your databases, cloud storage, data lakes, BI tools, um, ingesting all the metadata around the data that was ingested in a process known as metadata ingestion. Um, and this can typically be achieved through APIs, connectors, or crawlers that, again, run in tandem with the actual data ingestion process. Then, once you have your data, uh, your metadata collected, uh, you then will go to the process of data classification and tagging. Um, and so here, you'll have the catalog classify data based on predefined rules, business domains, uh, or machine learning algorithms, um, and things like sensitive data, such as personally identifiable information, uh, PII data for short, can be tagged for compliance purposes, making sure you have the proper controls on that data. 
Then you have data lineage tracking. Um, and so a good robust data catalog will provide data lineage, um, which helps you to map the journey from source of data transformations to the final destination. Um, and this visibility helps you make sure that, hey, data integrity and is going to be strong throughout my pipeline and I have a record of it being strong. Um, and also makes it much easier to troubleshoot issues down the line. Something comes up that causes an error, you have your data catalog that has all the information relevant to help you troubleshoot it. Um, then next, search and discovery. Um, so this is kind of organizing your data um, in, into making it searchable. Um, so a key function of a data catalog is its searchability. Um, you know, your users are gonna be searching for data sets using filters, keywords, natural language queries, um, and the catalog displays relevant results with metadata, descriptions, and usage history. Um, then fifth step is actually data governance uh, and access control. Um, so here, you're, you're integrating with your existing governance frameworks, your SSO provider, your identity providers, to enforce your policies on who can access, modify, or share data. Um, and here, support role-based access control, as well as policy enforcement to maintain security and compliance, making sure, you know, a big part of having an effective data catalog is having strong controls on it, so you can give users really broad access to the data that they need, um, and deep access to do whatever they need with it. Then finally, in tandem with this is, you know, collaboration and data literacy. Um, so giving users a platform, this is kind of, you know, after the data is ingested, allowing users to add context by commenting, things like rating data sets, sharing insights. Um, and the collaborative feature is honestly one of the most important parts of a data catalog because it lets employees across different departments share and use data effectively, but also it really helps with bringing new people on board. You know, if you have a really effective data catalog that describes all of your data well, it's really easy to onboard someone because they can come in, read the data, understand it themselves, rather than needing to go through a really you know, long and complex on onboarding process where someone needs to give them all that institutional knowledge around what the data actually means. So now that we've talked about you know how data catalogs work, some of their tools, why are they important? Um, and they bring a lot of advantages to businesses these days um, by helping streamline data management and improving the usability of your data. So you don't just have a bunch of data that you're paying to sit there. Um, and there are a couple key benefits you know, I want to focus on. Number one, enhanced data discovery. Um, organizations, especially the large ones, struggle with data silos where you have valuable, valuable information that's scattered or isolated across multiple sources. Um, and having a data catalog provides a single point of access to search and find any relevant data across the organization really quickly. Whereas all data is in silos, you, know, you got to go to a team, you got to request them, and that's assuming you even know that they have relevant information. Um, so data catalogs really help to break down silos. Um, secondly, you also have improved data governance and compliance. Um, there's a lot of regulations like GDPR, CCPA, HIPAA uh, that you need to be aware of when working with data, especially user data. Um, and businesses need to make sure that they have proper data handling and governance processes, as well as a record of those processes um, for tracking sensitive data, managing access permissions, and also providing those reports for compliance and maintaining that compliance good standing with the government of your region. Also, better data quality and trust. Um, you know, by offering things like data lineage and usage statistics, data catalogs can really help improve data trustworthiness uh, because you know that, hey, this data, I can see all the lineage, I can see all the transformations that happened here. I trust that this data is of high value. Um, and then users can also verify sources, understand transformations, and rely on that accurate, high quality data. Um, you also have faster decision making. Um, so data catalogs really help to accelerate analytics and decision making by making it easier for analysts and data scientists to find and then utilize relevant data without needing to search across multiple systems. Um, and then finally, in tandem with kind of faster decision making and the rest of these is enhanced collaboration and productivity. With that shared knowledge base, your teams can collaborate much more effectively, helping to reduce that redundant work where you know one team does something and then another team does it because they don't have access to team one's work. Um, it just helps enhance overall productivity by allowing you to not duplicate work and also have access to data much quicker rather than having to go through you know endless processes to actually gain access. So now, as promised, want to round off with just giving you a quick primer of kind of some of the top data cataloging solutions in the market. Um, so first. One of the first data cataloging solutions, honestly, was Alation, um, and big pioneer in the data cataloging space, combining machine learning with user collaboration to help improve data discovery and governance. Really popular with big, large enterprises, um, you know, very prevalent in there, and I'd say kind of the 
bridging the gap as you know, hey, one of the first market leaders, um, and also now one of the most mature uh, platforms out there. You also have Calibra, which is data intelligence platform, um, and it's focused more on data governance and compliance. Uh, really strong regulatory support, so it's very popular for industries that have really stringent data regulations. You know things like banks, uh, anything you know FedRAMP, Calibra is a good choice for you know keeping track of all that. Um, you also have Informatica, super super old. <laughs> um, I mean, this is more I'd say if you know you're in between cloud and on-prem, you still need to have kind of bridging the gap. Informatica might be a good solution, but really this is one of the most legacy vendors out there. I would say. Um, you also have Google Cloud Data Catalog. Um, this is kind of, I'd say, not the most feature-rich tool out there, but it is very much optimized to just run alongside services like BigQuery and then also integrating with the rest of Google's data governance tools, so useful for that. Similarly, AWS Glue Data Catalog is designed to just easily pair with AWS resources and, and you know, obviously pull data from that um, and integrates well with AWS uh, services like Athena, like Redshift. Um, you also have... Microsoft Purview, which was formerly known as Azure Data Catalog. Similarly, that's the Azure platform for data cataloging. So if you're all Azure, probably going to be using that. Um, now, in terms of like the new players in this scene, um, Atlin is a pretty hot modern data catalog that's designed for data teams, has really strong collaboration tools, also integrates really well with other tools in the stack like Looker, Tableau, Snowflake, uh, really popular out there right now. Um, and then one that's you know kind of just I'd say like easy to use and, and more of a like beginner data dot world um, cloud native data catalog mainly focused on collaboration and data democratization, very much just intuitive user friendly platform but sacrifices some enterprise features for that. Um, so that's really all I wanted to cover around data cataloging. Just give you a quick primer how it works, why it's important, why you might want to consider it. Um, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.